was it 1230? That is correct. And you know from reading the statements that Michael Jackson was in a blue Escalade at that time, heading home. I, you're telling me that he wasn't home, that's fine. So he wasn't home. <clears throat> the third shot then would have been 30 minutes later at 1 a.m. Right? Was he home then? Almost. Okay. Well, based on the exhibit. Yes. Uh huh. Is that correct? That's... The third shot would be at 1 a.m.? The third shot was at 1 a.m. You, are you looking at your exhibit? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the exhibit right here on my laptop. Are you looking at the one that you originally created or the one that was presented to the jury? I'm, I am looking at that one as we're talking through it. Go ahead. Because the one you originally created had an additional line, didn't it? Let me look at the report. Yes, the one I originally created had something called responsive to painful stimulus and not responsive to painful stimulus. And that line began at approximately... Th those lines? Non -respon not responsive to painful stimulus. What point did it start? That's just simply a point on the y-axis, so it's, it's, it's equally applicable at all points in time. It just runs the entire scale, uh, so it runs from 0 to 12, but that's simply a yeah. range. And what? Where on the y-axis? So that, oh, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, that is about 0.15. A little bit higher than 0.15? Uh, yeah, 0.152 or something like this. I actually, I actually have the absolute number for you. Well, I didn't do a very good job, but I estimated here. Mm -hmm. Somewhere about there, yeah. where I drew. Yes. I indicating a hand uh, written line mm -hmm. horizontally. Yes. And this line represents not responsive to painful stimulus. Correct. That based right? on the, that's based on the study by uh, uh, Dr. Geller and I. So. Lorazepam is not an analgesic, right? That is correct. What is an analgesic? An analgesic is a drug that is used to specifically block pain in patients. Right. It's a sedative. It's, it's, this is a sedative. So if, if, if we are at a level, a particular blood level, where a patient is not responsive to painful stimulus, that patient's asleep. Is that right? That is, uh, I would agree with that. So based on your lorazepam analysis, four milligrams, 10 shots, by the fifth shot, he has, the patient has exceeded your painful stimulus line. That's correct. And as we keep going in your simulation, mm -hmm. yes. yes, we reach a point where even at all points in time after the seventh shot, we're above that painful stimulus line. That is correct in this simulation. So you would agree with me that based on your simulation, the patient, in this case, let's say Michael Jackson, under this scenario, would be asleep from 2.30 to at least 11.30. No, I would not agree with that. Would he be responsive to painful stimulus during that time? Because he's been exposed to benzodiazepines potentially every night for 80 days, I actually do not know. His exposure, benzodiazepines are associated with tolerance, and his exposure to continued to, to doses of benzodiazepine 
every night for 80 days makes it almost impossible to project what his response would be to a benzodiazepine concentration of 0.3. Is it your testimony that you believe, based on Dr. Murray's statement, that Michael Jackson received benzodiazepines every, for 80 days? Is that what Dr. Murray said? Dr. Murray said he'd been using benzodiazepines for a period of time prior to this, and I'd have to review the details, which I'm happy to do for you. I believe it had been going on for at least a month. And I'm, again, I, I can easily find out by going through the drug shipment records, which I have on my laptop, if you'd like me to. Well, drug shipment doesn't mean drug usage every day. I have no medical records. I have limited access to knowing so what you, actually happened. So since you have no medical records, you made that assumption? What assumption? That ba since you have no medical records, you made the assumption that Michael Jackson, that Dr. Murray gave Michael Jackson lorazepam for 80 days? I have Dr. Murray's testimony that he's been using lorazepam and midazolam. And as we have established, without medical records, it is very difficult to know what he did. It looks... Let me, let me actually pull up his testimony and see what he says about it. You mean the state? Let me pull up his, his statement. Let me pull up his statement and see what he actually says. I'm happy to do that for you. That, that's, that is if you want. Mr. If you would like me to. It would, the, the statement's in evidence. The jury has it. You don't need to do that. He doesn't need to do that. Well, then, then you can ask your question. Let me, let me, ask, you your next, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What significance does 40 milligrams have to you? I limited the dose to an ampule, simply because an ampule was found. There is, as I've mentioned, there are many possible dosing regimens one could use to get that level, but it seemed reasonable to limit it to one ampule. Did and I can, you, did, were you assuming that Dr. Murray used an entire ampule? No, I'm simply showing that one can get to the level with repeated doses of drug, but not with the two milli with not with the four milligrams that Dr. Murray claims to have given. That is not correct. Actually, that's not what your report says. Is it? Let me go to, I'll, I'll direct you. Mm -hmm. Page um, 15 is your lorazepam simulation. I see it. On that last, on the page, the last sentence, Murray, you said, did not give Jackson four milligrams of lorazepam, you said, right? Correct. The data suggest a far higher dose. Correct. Possibly an entire 40 milligram vial of lorazepam. Correct. That's what your report says. Correct. Are you saying now that you merely showed the jury this simulation because it's a possibility? Is that I, I stand by the statement as it states here. A far higher dose, possibly an entire 40 milligrams. I stand by that statement. You. Why, why did you take off the painful stim to uh, not responsive to painful stimulus line today, yesterday? I'm, just, I'm trying to make it as, as easy as possible for the jury to see the graphs. There's no particular. Thought the jury would have. Wait, wait. <coughs> There's no particular what? You thought, you thought the jury would have difficulty understanding a line like that? These are complex graphs, and. I'm trying to explain to the jury rather complex pharmacology, but there's no other agenda as you are alleging. No, I'm just asking questions. Motion to strike. Well, again, statements are not questions. We'll have another one, though, right now. Thank you. In, in your analysis, you did not take into consideration once again, with regard to dose, as you worked backward, you did not 
simulate anything to do with oral lorazepam? Not in this analysis. I assume you prepared for the prosecution an analysis on oral lorazepam. I have looked at oral lorazepam for prosecution, yes. You, um, what? Why don't you help us to understand how oral lorazepam works? It goes using your pharmacokinetic, co-kinetic. Go, let's say you swallow a two milligram pill, goes down your throat, and where does it go? Into your stomach. And what does it do? The tablet will dissolve over time. How much time? The actual half-life of absorption, according to Greenblatt, is about 22 minutes. So half-life means that half the pill is absorbed in 22 minutes. That is correct. Okay. There's, There's actually a lag time, but we can talk that. We can leave the lag time out for our purposes. And then where does it go? What the happens? Pill, the pill then goes to the liver. All right. And uh, the liver, I guess, is subject to first pass? Correct. So the lorazepam doesn't work, or it just it's not? The oral bioavailability, bioavailability is what? About 92%. All right. Then what? When it goes into the bloodstream, okay, it follows what's called two. The model that Greenblatt has used is a two-compartment model, which involves both uh, a rapid and a slow phase. So it circulates into, it distributes into multiple body tissues, although the body can be thought of as just having two tissues, a, a small tank and a bigger tank. It then also diffuses across the blood-brain barrier into the brain to exert its effect. And as we've talked about, the lorazepam glucuronide, 25% of that gets deposited back into the stomach, back into the bile, where it goes into the small and large intestines. So just like intravenous lorazepam, the metabolite for oral lorazepam is gluconeride, or whatever however you pronounce it. Is yes, that right? That is correct. Glucuronidated. And perhaps it sloshes back into the stomach. That's correct. Not, not perhaps. It does. It does. It does. Can I have a second, Judge? I have to get You some. may, please. I'm going to show you. Is this? Do you have? Just I'm sorry, Judge. I'm sorry about this. Okay. BBB? Is that how we're doing it? Okay. Triple, Triple B. Triple Brock. Can I see it? Oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> so it is being viewed by the prosecutors. I'm going to show you what we've, what's been marked as BBB. Hmm? What I've done, what we've done. Ah. Hold on a second. I'm going to make it easy. Okay. I'm going to, can I, I'm going to make this CCC, Judge. This new one, CCC. Help me out, help me out, help me out. <laughs> uh, this, is there a triple B? There is, and I'm going to use it. Okay, you have another exhibit, Triple yes. Charlie. Yes, thank you. Know, thank you. This is actually another simulation that you did in this case for loraz uh, lorazepam. Yes. This is a simulation based on what Dr. Murray said he gave. Correct. And it shows 2 o'clock injection and a 5 o'clock injection. Correct. 